history. It's very important to have to learn counseling skills. Uh, kila mmoja katika huduma anahitaji kuelewa hali ya kushauri. Uh, I want to share one experience of me going to a one country to do mission work. And uh, and the pastor asked me to counsel a couple. Na mchungaji akamuuliza ashauri watu wa ndoa ama ndoa. And then when I was counseling the couple I found that there was problem in the relationship. And But the pastor was very anxious to help this couple to really be devoted to the church. Na mchungaji alikuwa anataka kabisa alikuwa na hamu hao watu hii nini jamii ipate kujitoa kwa huduma kanisani. He was very conscious that then he told me, can you talk about the anger issue? Na akamsumzia kwamba wasumzie kuhusu hasira. But at that time I found that I have to let the couple know about the relational problem first. Eh hapo akataka ya kwamba wale walio na kuandoa wapate kujua hali ya hasira kwanza ama hali ya ya ndoa kwanza and and uh, after a while the pastor start i i would say uh, you know keep telling the couple what they should do uh, kila wakati mchungaji angemwambia ya kwamba waambie hao wapendwa ama mume na mke kile wanatakana wafanye uh, he told the couples to you know care for each other be nice to each other and to be nice to the the mother in law akawa naulizia anazungumzia huyu ndugu na dada wawe na katika hali ya kuelewana vizuri na pia kupenda mama mkwe na in the process i did not want to uh, contradict the pastor at all na hakutaka kuwa kinyume ya masumuzo ya mchungaji because i don't want to cause any problem uh, with the pastor and the couple kwa sababu hakutaka kuleta tena utengano kati ya hao wapendwa ambao ni mume na mke na mchungaji. I I did finish, you know, the counseling with helping the couples to realize their problems. Hakumalizia na ili wale ndugu na dada ama mume na mke wapate kujua shida zao katika nini ndoa hiyo. And how they could, you know, change and work on the relationship. E vile wange badilio wange wange badilisha hali yao ya mahusiano katika ndoa afterwards i talked with the pastor in a humble way baadaye akazungumza na mchungaji kwa njia unyenyekevu because he asked me to do training on counseling kwa sababu alisema afundishe wale kuhusu eh eh, eh kushauri afundishe kanisa na hawa pia i told him the the concept of counseling akamuelezea eh, mbinu za kufanya mashauri I told him that when we teach we can tell if people are ready uh, if for instance you are ready to learn how to pray for people who experience God I can teach ikiwa akamwambia ikiwa watu wako tayari kwa mfano nyinyi mko tayari kwa kufundishwa jinsi ya kuombea watu na mkiwa tayari hivyo ako tayari kufundisha but when people are not ready they are in a certain position ikiwa watu hawako tayari wako katika hali nyingine the couple they did not you know they they thought they were doing the right thing and they were angry with each other na walikuwa na hasira mwingine kwa mwingine ama wanachukiana so at that moment they were not willing and they didn't know how to change na katika hali ile hawakuwa wanajua vile wanaweza kubadilika so i have to guide them to realize the problem and guide them how to change na ilikuwa ni jukumu lake kuwasaidia kuelewa shida yao ili wapate kubadilika. I use this illustration. Anatumia hii na kili. They are here. Wako hapa. I want them to go here. Anataka waende juu. I cannot change them in one session of counseling. Na hawezi kufanya wakabadilika kwa mafundisho 
ya nisali moja ama wakati mmoja. I have to guide them to realize their problems. Anahitaji awaelezee wapate kujua shida zao and then to think about the solutions together na wapate kuwaza kuhusu eh, suluhisho pamoja wakiwa pamoja. Hopefully they will listen and gradually change. Eh, kwa maana ya kwamba wata wataelewa na kwa muda sio muda wapate kubadilika. I use an illustration. Na anatumia hii kupatiana maelezo. If you have a church member who doesn't love the Lord. Ikiwa uko na muamini ambaye hapendi Bwana. He doesn't love the church. Hapendi kanisa. And you just talk to him and say, unamuelezea tu na unamwambia. You love the you, you you should love the, the Lord, you should love the church. Unatakana umpende Bwana na umpende kanisa. If you don't love God, God is not happy with you. Ikiwa hampendi Bwana, Bwana hako na uh, hako na amani na wewe. So you should hapendi. serve God with me. Kwa hivyo tumikia Mungu na mimi. Now after you tell them that, do, would they start to obey you? Ikiwa utawaelezea hivyo wataanza kukuti. If you just tell your members, this is your problem. You need to change. You need to do this. After you tell them, will they change? Ikiwa utawaambia hii ndio shida. Hii ndio shida. Wakisikiza watakuwa kubadilika. I will tell you, most people don't want to change when you tell them to change. Nataka kuelezea watu wengi hawataka kubadilika unapoambia wabadilike. Now this pastor learned when two days later his mother called him. Eh uh, huyu mchungaji akakuja akaelewa baada ya siku kadhaa mama akimpigia simu. And the uh, and the mother kept telling him what to do. The mother kept telling him what to do. Na mama mzazi akaendelea nafikiria mama mkuu akaendelea kumwambia kile cha kufanya. And he listened and he felt that the mother was preaching to him. Na huyo mchungaji ikawa ni kama kwamba mama anamhubiria. So he told his mother, akaambia mama, I'm not a child. Mimi si mtoto. You don't need to talk to me like that. Utaka uniongeleshe hivi. And then he suddenly remember what I said. Na akasema sikiza vile nikuelezea. If we preach to members not on the pulpit but when you talk to people and keep saying you have to do this, do this you have to do that if if preach, keep preaching to people like that. Ukianza kuhubiri na unahubiri watu unawaelezea fanya hii fanya hii ukiendelea hivyo. They will think we are like his mother. Watadhania sisi ni kama mama wa, ama wazazi wao. Keep nagging. Kila wakati unaweka kwake kidole unamuonyesha kidole. And they will be turned off by pastors like that. Now what a turn up? They will be turned off that they, they would make them hawatataka tena kuonana na na mchungaji tena. But many pastors did not realize that. Na wachungaji wengi hawaelewi hilo jambo. Many pastors have this habit if they see something wrong with someone they will keep telling the person you have to change you have to do this do that. Tunaji wengi tuna mazoea tukiona shida kwa mtu tunaendelea kumuelezea na kumuelezea kumuelezea badilika badilika. Now I have to tell you what happened I I just say this uh you know to illustrate the point. Anazungumzia ili ili apate kupeana maelezo. You know I care about this pastor anajali kuhusu mchungaji after the pastor learned the lesson he was willing to to listen to people more alipojifundisha hii na kili akawa tayari sasa kusikiza asikize watu sahihi he realized when his mother talked to him like that he doesn't he didn't like it he didn't want to listen eh wakati mama alikuwa akiongea na yeye hakuwa anataka kusikiza he didn't realize when he was when we were talking with the couple when he talked to them tell them what to do Hakuelewa wakati alikuwa anasungumza na hawa mke na mme. Hakuelewa kile alikuwa anawaelezea. I noticed the couple the reaction was like this. Na sasa yani mme na mke hii ndio ilikuwa sasa hali yao ya kujibu. The couple's head were bent down. Hii mme na mke wakati mchungaji anaongea wangeliangalia chini. When the pastor kept talking the head would bend down. Wakati mchungaji anaongea nao wameinama chini. Were they excited to hear what the pastor said? Wana ile msusumko wa kutaka kusikia mchungaji ataongea nini? They were not. Hawakuwa na ile hao. They were just fearing, you know, just walikuwa tu wanavumilia. 
Just let the pastor talk, but hopefully the pastor will finish talking soon. Now, the point is this, we want to change people. You want to change your wife? Do you preach to your wife? You have to wash my clothes, you have to do things to that. You have to listen to me. Do you like your husband to talk to you like that? Do this, do that, do this, do that. Do this, do that. Nobody likes that. It's not going to change people. Now the, con the concept of counseling is this. You listen to people and know where they are. Now, I want to tell you, these skills are very helpful in all relationship uh, situations. If you learn to listen to people and respond to their needs and feelings, you can change more people. You have more friends. Now the key is this, when this person talks about his problems, for instance, um, I use an illustration. This person's mother passed away. And she's crying. Very sad. And you tell the woman, tell oh, your, mother, your mother is in heaven. Rejoice because your mother is in heaven. Do not cry. Do not be sad. Do you think it will change her? But if you say, oh, I know you love your mother. I know you feel very sad. I know you miss her. It's not easy. The person will say, wow, you understand me. I saw in many funerals a woman crying. Everyone come to her and say, don't cry, don't cry. Wipe the tears. Let go, let go, no problem. So everyone is advising. Not too many people say, oh, I know you miss her. I know you love her. I know she means a lot to you. Now, if people talk to you like that, how do you feel? Okay. You feel good, right? Yeah. You feel this person knows my feeling. If a person comes to you and says, Pastor, you're not preaching well. You have to read the Bible more. <laughs> Pray more. You'll be a pastor, better pastor. You see the people leaving you now. If you don't change, the people will go away. Does it help you? But if someone says, Oh, Pastor, I know it's very difficult to be a pastor. I pray for you all the time. I know it's not easy for you. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm willing to do it for you. And I appreciate what you've done for me. Now, if someone talks to you like that, would you like this person? Do you yes. like this person? Yes. 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 So a person can understand your feeling and respond to your feeling. You will like that person. But if he keep preaching to you, this is what you should do to be a good pastor. I know what, you know, I went to a church to serve and after three months, the senior pastor asked me to be the senior pastor. 
anaelewa alienda kwa kanisa baada ya kuhudumu miezi mitatu ule mchungaji mkubwa akasema hapana wewe chukua usukani kwa mchungaji mkubwa he said every time after i preach my wife keep telling me you don't preach well I don't like your preaching. And he feels very bad. When he saw me come, he said, you be the senior pastor. <laughs> so the wife's word, does the wife's word build up the pastor? No. The pastor was suffering. So we have to realize it. Realize that telling people what to do may not help. When, when people are ready, you can tell them. They want to learn how to do evangelism, you tell them, it's fine. But they, when they are not ready, and you tell them, you have to preach the gospel. They won't change. Then what can you do to change them? Listen to them. Care about them in every way they talk about things. When your family members tell you, oh, my husband is not nice to me, my wife is not nice to me, don't keep preaching and say you should forgive your husband and wife you should love them and you should be nice to them but listen to them and let them talk about their feelings and, and say, I know it's difficult for you. And then, and then you can ask, what do you think are the problems behind these problems? Now, I don't mean that wife or husband is, is the main problem. Both persons are problem. But if, if I just tell them change, they won't change. I have to guide them to realize how they communicate, how it is destroying the relationship. Sometimes I ask them to talk to each other in front of me, handle a problem in front of me. For instance, the wife might say, Oh, he never listened to me. And then I'll ask the wife, When you said that to him, what do you think he will, how do you think he will feel? And then the wife might say, Well, he might not feel happy. And then I say, what can you, how can you say it better? If she doesn't know how to do it, I will guide her to do it. Instead of preaching, I will guide them. I will ask them what they can do. And I will ask them if this works or not. I will ask them if it works or not. And if they say it doesn't work, then I will ask them, how can you do it better? So instead of preaching, I guide them. But first of all, I will listen to both of them and listen to their feelings. I will tell both of them, yeah, no, it's difficult for you. I have counseled husband and wife and then usually the wife comes to me and say, I need help, my wife, my husband is not nice to me. And in the counseling, I will listen to both of them. 
Na katika hali ya mashauri atasikiza wote wawili. And I say to both of them, I say, yes, it is difficult for you. Na atasungumzia wote wawili, ndio ni ngumu kweli. And I say, I know this problem is not easy to handle. Na awaelezea kweli hii shida sio rahisi ya kutatua. You know some husbands said to me afterwards. Unajua wao wengine urudi kwa muelezea baadaye. When you said that, you know, you are the first person that understand my feeling. When he saw that and both sides were, well, usually I don't help, I mean I don't take side. When both persons saw that I listened to their feelings, they both liked my counseling. Anapokuwa hakui upande wa mme ama mke anapata mashauri yao wenyewe wa, kila mtu anakuja anasema kumbe unanielewa when i guide them anapopatia mwelekeo they will listen to me watamsikiza and they will try to change na watajaribu kubadilika they might not change you know everything they might not change everything hawatabadilika kila kitu but if they change a little bit i tell them you are doing well oh wakibadilika tu hata kitu you are improving. You are improving. And the next time they improve a little bit, I say, that's better. That's good. So they feel that I care about them and I am guiding them. I'm not preaching to them and I'm appreciating the change. Sasa wale watu wanajisikia kuwa anawaelekeza vizuri anawapenda. And some of them, they, the marriage problem is, was serious, and then after the counseling, they gradually change. And then if I apply this to help someone's spiritual life, to help someone's spiritual life, now the person doesn't pray, doesn't obey God, Mtu haombi, mtu hati mungu. He commits sins. And many people say, repent. God will punish you. And then he will just feel very bad. But if this person come to me and say, you know, pastor, I have been a very weak Christian. I'm not doing well. Or sometimes I ask them first, how are you? And then they say, I'm not doing well. The first thing I do, I don't teach right away. I will first find out why is it difficult for them. For instance, they say, when I pray, I don't feel anything. Then I will say, yes, I know that is difficult. Yeah, I said in the past too, I, you know, there were times that I prayed and I did not feel anything. So it is difficult for you. And that makes it hard for you to pray, right? <coughs> and it makes it hard for you to pray. And I know that you are trying. You just have not found a way. So I appreciate your effort. When you try, you will improve. And I can guide you how to experience the presence of God. And then they try, and then, you know, they try to open the heart. And then I will tell them, you are doing well. You are improving. You really have the motivation to improve. And then the next time I ask them, they say, I have improved. And I say, you are doing great. And also I would try to help them to try to serve God in some ways. And they, uh, when they're ready, when they're ready. And, and then they found that they can do something for God. And they feel very good. And gradually I can raise up their spiritual life.
This is much better than I just preach at them and say, you have to do this, you have to repent, you have to, you know, follow God. That, I tell you, many people with problems came to me all the time. Watu wengi waliona shida huwa anakuja kwake mara nyingi. And I listen to the needs. Na nasikiza shida zao. Without condemning. Sio katika hali ya kuwa hukumu. And I tell them, God cares about you. Na naambia Mungu anajali maisha yako. God wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kukubariki. When you hear this voice inside you telling you to repent, is God talking to you? Ukisikia ndani ya roho yako unasikia kutubu, huyo ni Mungu anakuelezea. God is not giving up on you. Mungu hawezi kuacha wewe. And you just respond and say God I need help. Na wewe kazi yako ni kuendelea kusimamia Mungu, eh Mungu nataka usimamie. God is very happy. Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And then they try to do it and then I say you are working on it great. Na endelea kusema eh hey, unafanya kwa kwa ukuu. Now this way I gradually raise up the spiritual life of many people. Hii itainua maisha ya watu wengi ya kiroho. So I'm introducing this method of responding to the needs and feeling of people. Na anajaribu kupeana hii shauri ya kufikia malengo na hisia za watu and guiding them to check, to realize the problems na ili kuelekeza wapate kuelewa shida zao wenyewe and guiding them to find solutions ili wapate solution katika maisha ile shida zao when they are working on it then i say you are doing great wanapokuwa na wanabadilika nitawaambia mnafanya ukuu to your children too when they are working you say you're doing great. And then they feel happy. Now vizuri. And they will have the motivation. Now And also tell them your life is very precious. God has a wonderful plan in your life. Mungu ana makusudi makubwa katika maisha yako. I always tell my people, God has a wonderful plan in your life. Mara nyingi waambia watu wake, Mungu ana mambo makubwa. You can do things for God. Unaweza kuomba kwa Mungu. And then to let people know that they they are special. Kwa ili watu wapate kuelewa ni wa muhimu. God cares about them. Mungu anawajali. And then when they work on it, then I say, you're doing great. <laughs> like this afternoon when you pray for each other and then you experience the Holy Spirit. So I said, you have the anointing. You can do it. <laughs> that way people have more motivation to serve God. Yeah, sasa hapo watu watakuwa na ile moya kumtumikia Mungu. Now this concept of counseling is very important in yeah. ministry. Yeah. And people around you will like you. Now what way you We're not attracting people to like us. What way you to spend? But what we are doing is helpful to them and then they like your ministry. Hii tunafanya ni muhimu kwao na watapenda huduma wetu.